Well, good morning and good afternoon. We appreciate everybody attending today's strategy huddle. Uh, I guess it's the month of January strategy huddle. We're getting the year kicked off with the, the first one today. Uh, we're excited for your participation. And uh, for those who have not attended before, my name is Ryan. I'm an account manager with My Strategic Plan. And the purpose of this call with the strategy huddle is to talk strategy, talk execution, and address some real-world questions that uh, have been pre-submitted and really leave you with some actionable ideas and solutions. As we get into some of the ground rules here, the, uh, the call is typically supposed to last 45 to 60 minutes, and we really encourage the participation. If you identify yourself with a topic or question, uh, please raise your hand, and we'd like you to share some of your insights, some of the best practices that you found as a strategy leader. Also, if you have any questions on the right-hand side, go ahead and, and submit those questions. If we're able to have some time on the back end of the call, we'll take those live. Um, if not, we will follow up with you on those questions and possibly even address them in a future strategy huddle. Uh, getting into today's call, we had qu quite a number of questions that were pre-submitted. We are addressing three of them. Uh, for those of you that, that did submit questions that we don't get to, we will give you a follow-up call to talk one-on-one -on, -one on those. And... Uh, as part of the post-call uh, process, we do send out a survey, as, uh, a short survey to get some feedback, as well as a link to this recorded session and the PowerPoint. I want to thank you in advance for those who have in the past filled out that survey. We really take the feedback and, uh, and implement as best as we can. So as we get ready to hand off to Eric, I'd like to take a minute to first introduce today's strategy huddle leaders, and that is both Eric and Howard. Both are co-founders of M3 Planning, which is the parent company of My Strategic Plan, and really the brands and the intellectual property behind the system itself. Howard is a president of M3 Planning and also has a PhD in marketing with an emphasis on research. A lot of the work on strategy and the research behind our business is driven by his direction. Erica, she is the VP of Marketing and the author of the Strategic Planning for Dummies, and she has several spot training videos, both on uh, the My Strategic Plan website as well as YouTube, if you're interested in, in getting some of those. Both Eric and Howard are involved with My Strategic Plan from a day-to-day -day basis, but are also uh, consulting with clients uh, half a month and are on the road. Uh, Howard's actually back in the office today with me. Uh, Erica is actually in the northernmost part of Alaska. Uh, doing some consulting with the customer up there. With that said, turn it over to Erica and we'll get this started. Thanks, Ryan. Um, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. It's exciting to be here. And Ryan's right. We're we are fortunate enough to have a client that is uh, located in Barrow, Alaska, and it happens to be negative 40 here, which is just such an interesting experience. So um, really excited to, to dig into uh, three of the questions that are the focus of the huddle today. And um, Certainly, really, as Ryan mentioned, take uh, your feedback from the surveys uh, that uh, are the post uh, post session surveys really seriously. And one of the things that you all said last time is you really appreciated the last huddle's interaction, and that's really the intent of, of what we're driving to. And you know how technology is. It's all here to help us do that and um, us working through um, how best to get as much conversation going is, is something that we're continuing to work on. So we're going we're gonna, to um, embed that into today's session as well. So you'll see a couple things come up. We'll ask for your feedback with the chat box on the right-hand side. If you would like to, 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 to address the whole group, please do raise your hand. There's a little raise your hand button there that Ryan note, mentioned as well. So just um, really help add to uh, to the session, and, and it'll make the whole conversation that much richer. So the three questions that we're going to address today is, is what is strategy? And not because we don't know, but just because a lot of times, uh, and this question came to us, and we've heard it in some of our work as well, is how do we know that we're being strategic? So we wanted to just go back to the to the basics and, and then talk about, about that. So we make sure that we are really and truly uh, being strategic in 2010. Another question that came up is, how do you really do um, a goal or objective cascading? How does that really work? So we'll address that. And then a lot of folks um, completed their retreats in December. If you're on a calendar year, maybe you're going into one. If you're on a different uh, fiscal 
calendar. So how do, what do we do after the retreat? How do you keep your momentum? So those are the three things we'll be addressing today, of course. If you have a question that comes up in a minute and, and while we're going through this stuff, please put your put a question in the chat box and uh, and we'll address them at the end. And if we don't have enough time, as Ryan mentioned, we will get to you after the session or we will also address it at the next strategy huddle, which will be in February. So with that, let's jump into the first thing that we like to do, which we call the strategy of the month, or strategy stat of the month. And Certainly, um, people and, and our, our, uh, our team is one of the biggest components to effective strategy. And I just really liked this uh, McKinsey study that came out last month, um, motivating people behind money. And the point behind this particular data is the fact that non-financial incentives, and you can see that as a first line there, praise and commendation for from the media, media manager actually ranks higher in effectiveness than performance-based cash bonuses. And certainly in today's economy, uh, there's not a lot of extra money floating around. So interesting to note how not only the, the commendation from immediate manager, so appreciation, and, and we do know that, but it's good to be reminded of it, that attention from leaders and the opportunities to lead projects and task forces, all of those ranks higher uh, than uh, performance-based cash bonuses or ineffectiveness. So, and you can see how often some of these are used, so you might consider um, you know, embedding that into some of your some of your work in your organization, or as you're consulting with your clients uh, over the over the next year, that that those items are just as important, and they don't cost as much money. They don't cost any money um, as as the people pieces do. So that's our strategy stat for the month. So let's jump into the first question, and with that, I'm going to turn that over to Howard. Uh, good morning, Howard, and and take it away. What is strategy? Well, how is the uh Still dark up there? Have you turned your lights on or off yet today? You know, it actually it's dark. It is as everybody says. You know, it is dark uh, the most of the day. Yes, so Four hours it, a day. it feels like it's midnight. Okay, let me. Be, I want to just back up a little bit to your your uh, strategy stat. Uh, primarily, I, I want to dig into this just a little bit more and make a point because uh, our our system and the way we approach strategy is from a principled standpoint. And the people piece, uh, which uh, so many folks, when they're just strictly focused on a uh, on, on a business plan, forget about you know what does it really take to to get the plan implemented and so forth. So we really need to throw the people piece back in there. And this stat was really helpful. Uh, to add to that is last month uh, the conference board, which is out of San Francisco. Uh, they continue to do surveys on, on statistics and so forth. They find that less than 50% of people in the jobs now are satisfied. And just like you said, Erica, so many of the folks out there are, you know, don't have money, and there's a lot of other things we can do to really uh, help them uh, to get the people engaged. And it's really, con you know, thinking about moving beyond just satisfaction, looking at uh, loyalty and engagement. So that's a really key part of strategy even though it's just a simple stat. So I just throw that out there, uh, and there's a lot of good information that's starting to, to surface on that, and it's a key part of putting strategy forward. So as we move into, as, this, as you brought up so many times, people, we all know what, quote, strategy is. We've heard that term. And, and, and uh, so how do we really know if we're being strategic, you know, how we would know that we really have a plan going? There's a, a uh, polling box on the right-hand side. Oh, time already ran out on it? Okay, well, anyway, uh, there's a, there was a polling box on the right-hand side we're talking about uh, if you feel confident whether your plan was uh, uh, actually uh, strategic. We'll talk about that as we wrap up this little section here. But the, the definition of strategy, and I, and I think there's some really, there's three key points in here. And we're talking about overall strategy, not necessarily defensive or offensive actions, that type of thing. But, uh, and this comes from uh, Michael Porter, who is the guru of strategy at Harvard. This comes out of, I think, an, it, it's an article in the 80s that uh, we talk about basic strategy and so forth. But the key, there's three key words that uh, we believe here and as we definitely talk with our, with our clients and so forth about strategy. The three key words are choosing, difference, and value. Strategy is about Making choices, what's in, what's out, not trying to embrace everything. And that's always difficult with a lot of entrepreneurs. So we, so from, we have to choose, and we have to choose to be different, 
and that's how we move ourselves into uh, a position that uh, our customers can understand us and we can make ourselves different than our competitors and we're a lot more visible in the marketplace. And the bottom line is all about delivering value. So the three key parts of that definition is we choose to be different to provide value to our to our clients. So it's, it's really a, it's a key definition that uh, folks really need to make sure that's included in developing their overall strategy. So to unpack it a little bit more, uh, got a little bit of some definition there and so forth, which I not going to read through. Everybody can you can see what they are, but the, so much of the time when we're working, not just necessarily in, in the private sector, but the public sector and the nonprofit sector, uh, is, is about the value proposition. What, what do we? You know, so what does that really mean? We, the value proposition is uh, is driven by our competitive advantages. And if you're in the nonprofit realm or, the, or in the public realm, you say, well, we don't compete and so forth. But actually, when it's all said and done. There is some form of competition going on. We'll talk to a pastor, and and they'll say, well, how many people you have sitting in your pews and so forth, and they so they do compete. So you can use the word comparative, but somehow we've got to have something that makes us different, makes us unique, sets us apart, because we can't be something to everybody. So value proposition, which is a key part of strategy, is based in our competitive uh, competitive advantages. And uh, probably a quick definition of what our value proposition is, if you look at it, why should our customers buy from us? Ask that question. Why should our customers buy from us? Why should we buy from Dell versus Apple? Why should we buy a Ford versus a Mercedes or vice versa, whatever else? So uh, strategy it is based in, in, in the value proposition, and, and to unpack that and really understand it is, is, is critical. And then uh, what we find so many times is uh, we, we're trying to get the best strategy, the most perfect and so forth, and we maybe spend too much time on that. But if we don't deliver somehow on something, our strategy is just another, I think we had a definition a couple months ago, it's just another form of hallucination. So when we develop and we, we put a strategy together, we've got to definitely figure out how in the heck we're going to deliver it. Uh, and, it, and it has to do with that bottom second to last sentence there is allocating the resources. We could talk about that again, but we see that so many times in, in working with folks that we got all these wonderful, great ideas, and we want to do all, we want to do everything we can, and that because it's, it's on top of business as usual. And then you hear that time and time again. So a lot of times we've done, we suggest the people say, okay, to move your organization towards its vision, put some money behind it. Have a strategy budget. Budget. So, what are you going to do to move it towards a strategy? So, uh, make sure the, the resources are allocated to be able to uh, implement whatever we've got developed. So, a lot of times we're starting to discuss this as we look at, uh, and uh, how do we know? Whoops, can we go back one. Oops. There, uh, we. We discuss a lot of times, you know, what's the difference between strategy and, uh, you know, and, and business plans or tactics and so forth. Uh, sometimes we've had a, you know, kind of a rule of thumb where, well, if, 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 if whatever you're doing doesn't affect more than, say, two departments, if it's only affecting one department, it's probably pretty tactical. But uh, there's, there's definitely some uh, huge differences. Because a lot of times, and we've got it on our website, people confuse the difference between strategic plan and business plan. Uh, business plan actually supports what's happening in strategy. So if you look through these, these definitions, is that I, I like the one item that we've got there is the second one down on the English definition of uh, under what, what strategy is. It's leading, it's being ahead, it's directing, it, it's sending things off. And then when we send things off to do something, then we have a tactic in how we're going to do it in 2010. How are we going to do it in 2011? So the way I explain it to the clients and so forth in, in, in when we're working with this is, is strategy is this thing that's going to take us from here towards our vision over three, four, five, maybe ten years. And then each year is, you know, how are we going to support that strategy? So that's a tactic. That's the what we're going to do. I mean, how we're going to do to support the what we're, we're going to do in the direction we're going. So, yes, tactics are typically a series of uh, steps and so forth to help us accomplish where we're going to 
how we're going to deliver the strategy. So as a little checklist, to, as a takeaway to uh, to to this is, uh, if your plan is not a roadmap for differentiating yourself, it's all about differentiating. It's all about if you go back to Porter's definition at the beginning, it's all about choosing to be different and delivering value. So we have to choose this. It's all about making a roadmap to be uh, to be differentiating. We have to create value for the future, and it's, if we're not delivering value, we're, we're in trouble. The, from a marketing standpoint, I, I see this a lot of time. The third step down there helps our customers accomplish, fix, or avoid something. We're meeting a real need. Uh, so many times as, as uh, entrepreneurs of smaller organizations, uh, we think we're, uh, we're delivering a real need when it's only a perceived need, so make sure you talk to your customers so you're not just delivering something to meet a perceived need but a real need. Then it focuses us on clear priorities and communicates both what we are and are not doing. And that's what I love about a strategic plan is because you take your group and set it aside and you decide where you're going to go, what you want to do, and that way not looking at all the different opportunities and, and op things that come along and the options, you're making a decision without making comparisons. So you're making a decision what's in and you're making a decision about what's out before we even start. So a lot of times when all these wonderful, great ideas come up during the next year, whatever else, you compare it to where we decided, which is tech, which is uh, strategic, and you move your organization forward. And then without resourcing it, then again, it's just uh, uh, clearly a hallucination. So how did we do on our polling? Can you report that, Ryan? Uh, we, we'd actually set the, the timer on that uh, a, a little short, so we definitely apologize for that. The, the, the results aren't really going to show a whole lot, uh, but they do show up on your side. Um, most people were uh, fell into the agree to, to, to strongly agree or the neutral and agree category of, of they feel confident about their strategy and their plan. That's that's really strategic. That's good, and I can take this and add this information in it and, and develop it more and and roll it out. So, Erica, how do we keep our momentum going after we've had these wonderful offsites? And we, so many times we've been in, in great places where we have these offsites, wonderful uh, retreat centers, and so forth. And uh, and then next thing you know, we have to go back into the workplace on the following day, and and the momentum tends to be like a air being let out of a balloon. Well, that's a question that uh, what. I'm not sure that air being let out of a balloon, that's a little harsh, but um, I think that people just get caught up in the day-to-day, you know, and so um, I'm sure that if you're uh, on the line today and you're um, responsible, you're an outsourced entity, if you're a consultant, you you know how um, how hard it can be to, to keep the momentum going with clients. It's, of course, our job to do so. If you're an internal resource, it's just sometimes one more thing that um, is sort of an added duty, if you will, and so what are some some things that you might consider, arrows you might consider adding to your quiver, um, knowing fully that um, this is is equal parts, um, well, it's probably more about or organizational development than it is about strategy insofar as getting the strategic plan adopted into the organization and moving. So with that in mind, let's look at a couple of a couple of tips, and I'm just going to pull from um, just some of the best practices that, uh, that that we've been implementing and things that have worked for us. Um, and if we could go to the next slide, please. We wanted to ask you um, in the chat box over on the, again, on the right-hand side, if you would think about this question as we're walking through this segment, what is one action implemented to keep your momentum after your retreat um, that you might like to share with everybody else on the call today? Um, and we'll, we'll collect everybody's answers at the end. So just, you know, as it comes to you, maybe maybe drop your answers in the chat box. So. Let's go through a couple of things that, that we found pretty successful. Um, you've heard us talk a lot about the fact that um, strategic planning uh, is a business process. And um, I, I would keep saying that because just so oftentimes it still feels like an event. So the, one of the most important things is to appoint a business process owner. Someone needs to own the process of strategic management in the organization. And certainly the CEO owns the results of that and he or she needs to be driving uh, the direction of the organization, but someone needs to manage it just like you manage a strategic, or excuse me, just like you manage a project plan. And you can see, I just put a little uh, example up on the screen. This is just a beginnings of a 
a project plan that we're using for a client currently. And, and you can see we've got it just exactly, it happens to be an MS project, it could certainly be an Excel. We, and, and, uh, we manage and we would recommend to anybody who's doing this internally as well as externally, we manage it just like you manage a project with very specific tasks and deliverables and expectations. So, and the most important thing about this project plan is that it doesn't end after the plan's done, and we know that too, uh, but again, really clearly uh, goes through uh, identifying when the strategy updates are, who is supposed to be attending, what we bring to those meetings, all that good stuff. So one item is a point of process owner. The next item is, and you've seen this slide before as well if you've joined us, and that is schedule your strategy update, and I'm just going to use update meetings right away. In fact, maybe you want to schedule them before you start the retreat. And that is to say, and this is just an example of what a quarterly set of activities might look like. So we've updated, we've had our annual strategy update, looking at that over on the left-hand side. We've rolled out the plan, and then we clearly, this particular slide actually has strategy sessions or strategy updates on a monthly basis, um, two-hour sessions at the leadership level, and then a longer one at the quarter at a quarterly basis. That may or may not work for you. Maybe you want to do the whole thing once a quarter. Some people think that's too long. So this needs to be something that works for your organization. But I really feel strongly about the fact that once you go from that retreat, making it to the next strategy update session is that is where so much um, – energy and um, effort needs to be focused to just get it to that next place so um, so it starts to become part of the organization. And that may already be working for you, you may already have it all going, and so um, for, your, for you it's, it's how do we make those meetings even more effective. So another tip, um, kind of thinking about some things that we are really uh, passionate about is communicating to, I say, to motivate and inspire. So I just have a couple of examples up on the screen. Um, the one that's on the left-hand side is just a recent um, communication tool that we used uh, for that particular client to communicate um, out to the larger organization about the strategic direction for 2010. And on the front side, you can't see it, it's too small and it's a and that's sort of intentional, um, but because it's a it's a, a privately held organization. But on the front side is the is the mission, vision, and values, and on what's underneath that on the back side is actually the 2010. Um, so it's, excuse me, it's the long-term strategic objectives and the 2010 goals. And and this is the communication tool that they'll be using to roll out their plan um, this year, and then of course carrying it carrying it beyond. The other item over there for the for the school district that happens to be where I am right now, um, this particular PowerPoint presentation, that's of course just the first slide, um, we worked pretty hard on creating a really engaging presentation that we used for the board as well as for the teachers um, and the administrators to get people really excited about the direction of the district. This particular PowerPoint presentation was also used with the county as well as with the Alaska State Legislature. So um, really trying to leverage communication tools, but also to get people excited as opposed to just looking at a bunch of bullet points. So motivate and inspire. Really uh, big, big fan of making sure, as another tip, that everyone can see their quote unquote my stuff. And I know that particular statement's grammatically incorrect, but we know that one of the things that needs to happen in order to go from ideas on flip charts to something that we can actually execute against and I can, I as a staff member can take movement on is I need something, this is just an example here, um, from our application, you can make your own as well, of a list of things that I'm responsible for doing as a team member, as a department director, to drive the long-term strategic objectives or strategic priorities for the organization. So this is, again, it's small text, but the item that is in gray is the, the bigger picture, longer-term statements, and the items underneath them are the breakdown um, at, at, at either the district, in this case it's the district department, or team member level. So really big proponent of not having to go through a big document, but just being able to see the subset of things that I'm responsible for doing. The next tip that I'd like to just throw out there, and, and this may or may not resonate, is, and I kind of just said, I think it's important that wherever you are in the organization, that it's it really hard to focus on more than, and five is a lot, actually, but I just put that out there, you know, more, no more than maybe three to five high priority items. So those big things that we're really trying to drive forward. The thing is, and, and I know we have all seen this, we go into a retreat, there's so many great ideas that come out, 
And we need to move from we don't want to lose all this great stuff to what are the putting sort of as Stephen Covey says, putting the first things first. What are the first things that we need to do in order to start start moving some of these bigger ideas forward? And I just call those things high priority items, those things that might come to the front burner. Of course, there's a lot of different ways to go about this, but maybe as a way to as, as a as a gauge, as a filter to look at the plan. Um, at each level of the organization, no matter where you are, from the executive suite down to the individual staff members, that you wouldn't have more, no more than five things that we're really trying to drive forward uh, through the course of 2010. And again, I'm going from you know long term to short term. I kind of like these words as well. I just wrote a blog post on this um, last week, and it was um, something that I, I um, borrowed and saw from another strategy consultant. I liked her words a lot, and she was talking about. Um, thinking about what are the incremental things we need to do, so those short-term high-priority items that come out of your retreat. What are those things that are maybe substantial, sort of mid-term, and I call them medium priority items. And then what are those things that are transformational, that are long-term, and they're certainly not lower priority, but they're lower priority as it relates to today, this quarter, this six months. And, of course, certainly the incremental items should add up to the transformational items. But it's kind of a nice, I think those words are really nice, sort of what's incremental, what's substantial, and what's transformational. And, and when we kind of think about that, um, it's a nice way to say, yeah, okay, what are those, you know, maybe three or five things that are incremental, short-term things that we need to, that I'm responsible for driving forward as it relates to the, that, that are going to drive the larger transform, transformational um, um, strategies for the organization. So those particular definitions seem to resonate, so I wanted to, to throw those out there as an idea for making sure that when you're done with your retreat and you have tons of documentation, maybe breaking them down into those three buckets. So... Why do we lose momentum? Um, these are just some five things that certainly um, I've heard, and you've probably heard a lot of these as well, that, you know, as you're into the year, let's fast forward, maybe it's July, and people just don't see any real progress. And when we don't show progress, it just becomes um, demoralizing, and we all understand that. So I think it's important to show real, substantial, data-based progress, hence having those strategy updates, taking ownership of making sure that your KPIs are updated, showing that the dial is moving, and not to be, um, um, let's pull, say, pull the wool over our eyes if things aren't going well, but we need to show some successes and, 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 and show some progress in some areas of the organization in order to see, show people that this really does matter. The plan's not relevant. Getting into the year, if we don't have those strategy updates and if we haven't modified our plan because strategic issues have popped up, as Howard mentioned, maybe opportunities pop up that actually we do make a clear choice that are within our strategy that we update our plan accordingly. If the plan's not relevant, it automatically becomes op not, not obsolete, but just not, um, just not something that we use uh, to make decisions. The third one that I put there is, and then some, I'm sure you've probably heard this before, but that, that there's no with on what's in it for me. Um, we threw up that stat strategy, stat strategy stat in the beginning about making sure that there's rewards. They don't necessarily have to be monetary, but acknowledging achievement. Canceling meetings, that certainly shows that the, the strategic plan and those strategy discussions are not as important as maybe the operational. And we know, everyone knows, that that does happen a lot. So someone needs to, that's why we need a process owner to make sure that those, those strategy updates happen, even if they're just an hour. And then the last one is such a big reason that plans go from, don't, don't make it from flip charts to implementation, and it's because it feels like busy work. And to get a plan dialed in, we all know that it takes a lot of time, and it takes time from a lot of folks in the organization. And until people see it adding value, it really just feels like busy work. So, so kind of just summarizing then, um, if you will, some ideas and, and thoughts that you might, you might think about um, if you've just gone through a retreat making sure that you've got a business process owner, um, making sure that you already have your strategy update meeting scheduled, motiv motivating and inspiring the organization through effective communication tools. Um, and, and it doesn't have to, you don't have to hire a, an ad agency to do that. Certainly there's a lot of different ways you can, you can get people excited and, 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 and use the templates and PowerPoint to do so. Um, making sure that folks in the organization have a clear understanding of what their, my, my stuff is, what I'm, I'm responsible for driving forward and how I fit into the bigger picture. And then making sure that the plan isn't too big and that there's maybe no more than three to five high priority items on, on any one person's 
plate. So with that, I'm, what, I'm wondering if anybody wants to chime in and add to the conversation about what you might be doing in your organization um, or what you've done uh, to add momentum um, after the retreat to keep the, keep the plan going. Ryan, do we have any comments in the chat box? Yeah, we had a couple of people, and I'll just read them, uh, some real good feedback. Uh, the first one was uh, we need to pub publicize the results of, for all to see. Hold everyone accountable for delivering on the objectives. And you really want to make sure all the relevant stakeholders are aware of the vision, goals, and objectives. And one thing I thought was key there was that the, the initial uh, response was, was, was to publish the results, and then he uh, clarified that actually, let's go change publish to publicize. And I think that's that's a key key word there. You're not just publishing, make, make it just sit on the shelf. Uh, kind of thing to publicize and just making sure everybody is aware and that seems more like a, a, a dynamic term that you can um, get, get everybody's feedback and keep going with. Uh, the other one, another good one was to post and periodically update the dashboards or scorecards on annual goals and progress. And I don't know that's one thing that we uh, like around here are the dashboards and, and we live, live and breathe by those uh, in other, a lot of our plans. That's great, and I, I think we all know, and, and depending upon how um, how far into uh, planning we've, we've come in our organizations, and certainly, you know, the more we do this, the better we get, um, but we, both, we know both those ideas, and, and as well as some of the other ones that we put up on the screen, take time and they take commitment, and certainly that's something, especially in organizations that are really scaled down right now, that we need to take both of those um, the sort of the best practices for both those ideas, not only publicizing and, and an effective communication and making sure that everybody in the organization not only hears it but understands. Um, and, and there's a lot of ways to do that, and taking that extra step is, is so important. It's something we can do even on a scaled-down a scale down, um, staff. And then making sure that dashboard is updated, and again, that just takes someone to do it, um, unless it's dynamic data, which is just wonderful. Not everybody has that opportunity. Maybe if it's feeling overwhelming, maybe it's just you maybe really pick five uh, numbers or, or, or ten. So again, it doesn't feel like it's just um, it's, it's, a, it's a monumentous task to, to get the data updated. So at any rate, great suggestions. Thank you for that feedback. Really appreciate it. Um, with that, I'm going to conclude that particular section and we'll transition to the next question, Howard, which is how do we actually cascade goals and objectives? And this is a fairly technical discussion, um, but people ask us this all the time. It was a question that came in as well. So, Howard, take it away. Take it away. Uh, Eric, I, I wanted to expound on, on two, not expound, it's my academic background coming in. But what we see time and time again, there is no, there is no going back to what you said before, uh, time and commitment, there's no magic bullet. No silver bullet with strategic planning. It'd be nice to be able to say, "Our, you know, we do this, and we know right away this is the, re the return on it." But we've seen year after year, it's a long-term commitment. It's a matter of everybody embracing it. It's the transparency and so forth, and that makes all the difference in the world. And and another point that I'd like to underscore what you said is that maybe you only take five items before you got to walk before you run. And I wholeheartedly agree with you. Let's just get something started and something going and start thinking strategically somehow. And that just gets the old ball rolling and people tend to embrace it and then make a difference. So when they start seeing where they, where they actually fit in the organization, that's where this cascading part comes in. And uh, again, as you said, it's, it's pretty tactical. But it, it, it's, it's so critical for people to kind of see where they fit. You know, how am I really part of making this strategic plan? How, how do I, you know, when we come back from the retreat or, or the boss comes and the management team comes back from the retreat, you know, so what? Where do I fit? And uh, this particular diagram that Ryan just put up on here, we've used this as of late, and particularly when we were working with the Boy Scouts, uh, and when the folks that are volunteers and working out in the districts and units, when they see that the bottom part of that pyramid where we're talking about individual goals and actions, that's them, that what they're really doing fits in and makes a difference with the departmental goals which make a difference in the annual uh, uh, operations, uh, organization-wide goals, and, and, and as well as 
then supports these long-term uh, objectives that are going to take us towards our vision, they they get it and, and and they feel so much better about these two, three, four, five things that they're supposed to be doing because it does it's relevant. It really does make a difference to them. Uh, so the, Ryan's going to be sending his PowerPoint out, and this particular pyramid is really helpful to help folks understand from this cascading thing how they really fit to where they belong. And uh, this explaining this and so forth takes a little bit of time and so forth. And, and what we're finding, like with the Boy Scouts, it's, it's, it's some of these folks just, uh, you know, don't think strategically all the time. And that's understandable because they're out in the field and they're dealing with the tactics like we were just talking. But when they start seeing that their individual day-by-day -day things are really supporting what's going on, it's well worth the effort. So we do have an example that comes out of a, a, a public entity because, uh, again, we can share this kind of stuff because the, the plan is up on the, uh, uh, up on the uh, City of Las Cruces uh, website and so forth. And what we see right here are, is, is what we call in, that, uh, in the uh, pyramid. Those are the long-term strategic objectives of the city. Those, they've got seven. Uh, Something, you know, Eric and I even today, it, uh, I have to back up and, and say that sometimes we use objectives and goals and interchangeably and priorities and whatever else. It's a matter of coming up with whatever the definition is and works in your organization. But these seven items are these long-term activities that the city is going to have to do year after year after year to move them towards their vision. So that's what this is. So they've got seven of them that we put together that fits in the balanced scorecard. Then, so based upon these seven uh, long-term objectives, we've got then city-wide uh, goals that are going to have to be done each and every year, and we've got examples right here uh, that uh, strategic objective being to foster vibrant economic environment and the public services department, one of their uh, citywide goals is going to be to continue to develop Las Cruces as a tourist de uh, destination. So that's citywide. The uh, public services is leading this and there's a few other for, uh, departments that are going to help it, but this is uh, going to eventually be uh, assigned to them. So then as we roll down then into the actual public uh, services department, the cascades down out to the, to the, as you see, to the third step, we got number five being the, where it says that's the strategic objective. Continue to develop Las Cruces as a tourist destination, and that's a citywide goal. That's all measurable. This thing is smart. And then this particular year or so, the Public Services Department is going to work on maximizing opportunities presented by the Spaceport America that they've got wide, uh, nearby. So what they're doing is supporting the uh, citywide goal of uh, making this a tourist destination. And, and part of the uh, strategic planning effort, they decided that they really need to work on their economic uh, environment and develop it, and through this we're going to continue to foster this uh, tourist de destination development. So, and, and again, we don't have it here, but each one of these things other than the strategic objective is, is smart. In other words, it's got to be somehow specific, uh, and it's got to be measurable and kind of aggressive, uh, but achievable, and uh, we've got to make sure it's time-bound and it's reasonable. So, so then as we drill down just a little bit further down into, in, into the individual, now this could be a, a unit or it could be a... Uh, a, a, a sub department or uh, so forth, but the, those are the different activities that they have to do to support this the uh, the departmental goal, which is maximizing opportunity, which then supports the citywide uh, specific long term goal. Uh, in in here, I'd like to remind us that uh, for those of us, most everybody that's on is, is using our strategic plan and all this is available in, inside of the plan, these reports Erica had in, in the previous discussion we had there, she showed an example of a team member or a unit member uh, a chart where they showed exactly what they were supposed to be doing, a report 
and that would be similar to what we see is coming from the what we have highlighted there about co-branding the city and or look into developing educational uh, informational tours and so forth so those are that's the, the, the levels that, that we've got in our plan and also the reports that will come out of there. As a, another report that comes out also is, is this is from the Public Service Department. These are the, the different uh, citywide goals that they're trying to support. Uh, and the one that we've been looking at all along here was the uh, continue to develop Las Cruces as a tourist destination, but the Public Service Department has those other uh, uh, citywide goals that they're supporting as well, and again, this is another report inside of MSP. And finally, uh, on the individual level, uh, John Smith, is, we've made John Smith uh, a part of the uh, Public Service Department. Uh, he may have a small team, small group, and so forth, but those are the three activities that uh, his group is, is working on. They're identifying uh, the internal and external costs and logistics to support the space station, space port, working with the PIO, the public information officer, and then the review and annual strategies. Okay, so this is, again, these are smart, they're measurable and so forth. So John and, uh, John and his team are supporting uh, the public service uh, department goals, which are the public service department goals, and, you know, roll up in, this, in support the citywide goals as well. So a quick little summary on this has, is that uh, cascading is, is tactical. Uh, it is, we've got there the grains are right size at each level because when we're looking at each individual level, we've got to make sure we've got the responsibility, we've got the resources and so forth to be able to carry out what we're, we're being uh, tasked with. Uh, Roll out what we're starting to use the that's really important uh, of these uh, cascading of the goals and so forth where they have a meeting and everybody kind of sees what they fit and they fit collectively that's always important they see that who's you know who's re responsible for what the time frame of what you're supposed to be uh, uh, accomplishing the true and then making sure that each what they're responsible for is is properly resourced. So when we do the rollout and, and you've got all the different team members like John Smith and so forth within that department, they see where they fit. They see the interdependencies, you know, what do I have to do to support somebody else? So as Erica talked about before, you know, with regular meetings and so forth, this keeps strategy top of mind and people can see how they're inter uh, affecting each other and helping each other out. So again, as Erica said before, this is rather tactical. Uh, it's, it's mechanical, but when people really see how it fits together, going back to that first pyramid and so forth, I, I think that's a, 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 a graphic that is is really helpful in understanding the frontline people, helping them to understand how they fit in and how they really shoulder activities and, and move forward. So with that one, we've got some opportunities for some more questions. You got some there, Ryan? Uh, we don't have any live, any questions that have been submitted yet. So if you have one, you can either uh, raise your hand, and we can open open the uh, the phone up to you. But we had two people that responded uh, post uh, that question on uh, keeping uh, the momentum from your retreat back to the office, keeping it alive. And I'll just read those two uh, responses while anybody thinks about some questions, and we'll hand it over to Erica. But uh, w one of them was we've also incorporated meeting relevant objectives part of senior management's performance plans. So they're, uh, they're, they're taking that and assigning some accountability at the senior management level with, with that follow-up. And then we have another one is uh, send out some thank you notes with summarizing a key few bullets. So they say like three bullet points of focus and one personal celebration plus an invite email, anything else anyone wants to add. So you get... Uh, you're trying to keep the plan or the retreat moving with uh, get, gathering some more information, some more ideas on, on moving forward. You know, those are some great ideas. I like that. Uh, are we going to post those someplace, summarize them, because they're just in the chat box? Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, send in the, the follow-up email with the uh, link to the, this recording of the PowerPoint. We'll uh, summarize or provide those in there as well. Yeah, because we had four or five responses. I think those are really great ideas. 
uh, because it, we've seen that is a critical, it, 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 it's a tough thing, you know, those re- offsites are great, bunch of ideas bubble up, as Erica said, and, and then we have to go back to, you know, reality and business as usual, and sometimes we just kind of lose the, the momentum, and those, I like, those are a couple good ideas. <laughs> Eric, you got anything to add to those, what, I think four ideas? I, nope, I think we're, I think we're doing great. So, what we wanted to do is just if you have any other questions, please do um, put them in the chat box, and I think we'll just uh, wrap up with what's happening next, and that is a couple of things. The next strategy huddle is on February 24th, and as folks are thinking about questions right now, please do uh, add them to or send them afterwards. You can see the email that's listed on there as well. One thing that we wanted to ask for is if you are interested in um, having your organization featured, maybe two to five minute segment on what's really working for you in strategy, planning, or execution, please drop us a line um, at that admin at email address and we'll work with you to put something together so you can share with a larger group. Again, our intention behind the huddle is just that. Let's get together and share our ideas. So we'd love to open up the floor to anybody who would like to contribute something that, that to, to the greater discussion and the greater uh, movement around how do we make this business process, process and this business practice as effective as possible. So if that's something that you'd like to do, we promise it won't take you very much time. We'll, we'll get you totally prepped and, and love, to, love to have you share on our next huddle. Um, also, in, in good practice, please do follow us on Twitter. We're posting a lot of stuff, uh, such as things from today, uh, blogs, newsletters, that type of thing, things that we're finding out in the ether, in, in, in the blogosphere, in the, in, the, in the conversation that's happening with the ones and the zeros all over the place. So we're, we're certainly adding to the conversation on Twitter, so a lot of great stuff there. Um, and then just to reiterate as well, um, Ryan will be sending out a survey as well as a link to the recorded session and the PowerPoint slides today. And as Howard mentioned, the suggestions that came out from you all will be added into that as well. So with that, Ryan, unless there's anything that you'd like to address right now, we will conclude today's call. I appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to, to join us, and we look forward to, uh, to building this uh in the 2010, the strategy huddle, and uh, we're not looking for experts out there uh, in presenting. If you're if you're a strategy leader, you have the best practices. Eric said that some that's working for you and your company. Uh, let's share it with the others out there. And if we could gain build this momentum in the strategy huddle, I think it'd be fun for 2010. What about consultants? There's a number of people that uh, are out in the field. Add them too, as well, not just necessarily in the company. Okay. So, it, it, again, I'd like to just underscore it. Everybody said it's, it's not about us. It's about helping folks that are out in the field make strategy reality and, 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 and not make it so mystical and make a difference in how they run an organization. So I uh, appreciate your time, and uh, stay connected with us. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon.